Our stories are an important part of Women's History Month. Don't let your story go unheard. Good evening, I'm Marie Caldwell, your host for tonight's live call-in programming. Brought to you by the Channel L Working Group. Become an active member of our live programs by calling us at 505-6363 and join in on our lively discussions. Next, we bring you Manhattan at Large with this week's moderator, Councilwoman Miriam Friedlander. The topic for discussion will be New York versus city developers in Lower Manhattan. Remember to stay tuned following Manhattan at Large for tonight's screening room presentation, Partners in Care. That's at 9 p.m. The following program is brought to you by the Channel L Working Group. The following program is brought to you by the Channel L Working Group. Good evening. I'm Miriam Friedlander, City Councilwoman, Lower Manhattan. How are you tonight? This is Manhattan at Large, and we are really going to talk about something very large tonight. We're talking about New Yorkers versus developers. And you just saw something on the screen where Manhattan was growing from that sailboat era, you know, the little houses, the little wooden ones, and it grew. It grows big. I don't know whether it's better or worse, but it grows big. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. How we're growing in Manhattan, how we're growing citywide. It's bound to affect you and the way you live. So I'd like to introduce my guests who really know about this thing, or at least they know about it in their own district, right? Jana? Jana Townsend. And uh, what group are you from, Jana? Um, I'm from the Tribeca Task Force, which is in Tribeca neighborhood. Okay. Tribeca neighborhood. We're going to come back and find out where that is. Okay, and then we have Steve Rosen. And what organization you're Good evening, Mary. My name is Steve Rosen. I'm chair of Community Board 6. Community Board 6 runs from 14th Street to 59th Street, east of Lexington Avenue. On the east side. On the east side, east of Lexington you Avenue. You get the view of the East River. We hope to keep the view of the East <laughs> River. We're losing it rapidly. Yes, that's the big problem. Developers? Developers are doing oh, it wow. to us, yes. Well, we'll get back to that one. Rob, where are you from? Rob Schoenberg. I'm from uh, the Lower East Side, right. what the developers call the East Village. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, East 4th Street. Oh, you are? I'm president of the East 4th Street Block Association between 1st uh -huh. and 2nd Avenues. Well, I see a lot more than East 4th Street people around you. There are a lot of new faces in the there neighborhood. There are. You know, they're coming from different blocks and different organizations and such? Oh, yes. Okay. They are. Okay, you have a lot of problems there, I think. And then we have Fran Golden. Fran Golden's been around for a long time and a lot of work and a lot of experience. What organizations do you represent, Fran? Basically, um, the Lower East Side Joint Planning Council and the Cooper Square Community Development Committee and Business Men's Association. That's all? <laughs> That's all one. Oh, wow. That's all working together, but they have worked together for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go back and find out. We're talking about developers because in our city we see constant development, constant. And development is not low, beautiful, you know, gardens and houses. What we're finding, Fran, what are you finding on this thing? Uh, what kind of development have you seen coming around? Well, you know, we've been plagued with NYU, I don't have to, anybody that comes to the neighborhood is, uh, um, um, sees these massive buildings that have recently grown up. What's been bothering well, What are they developing? They're developing uh, dormitories for students at $1,000 a month a room. Oh, is that? That's, that's what oh, we fought. Oh, very and reasonable. Fought it hard, uh -huh. didn't succeed, 
uh, win some and lose some, but when you've been around how, for 44 years. How high years, are those you know, buildings? Uh, 14 stories and up. And up. In, in a community where the highest building is seven stories tall. Uh -huh. Well, why is that a bad thing, Fran? I mean, after all, you're bringing students in, you're bringing economy in, you're doing a... Okay, a devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bad thing <laughs> because the, the Lower East Side is a precious, historic, magnificent community of immigrants of all kinds. Uh -huh. All kinds, all colors, all religions, all races. Yeah. And it, what, it's what makes it special. It's not only special for the Lower East Side or for New York City, but for the United States. It is known as this very unique, historic uh -huh. area. When you get a, an avalanche of buildings like NYU along Third Avenue, uh -huh. it encourages other developers to say, well, if they can get $1,000 a room a month, why can't I? And if they can build so high, why can't I? Uh -huh. And before you know it, the rest of Third Avenue, between 8th Street and 14th Street, is suddenly gone. Right. It's been bought up by other big developers. The people who worked there, and many of them were small businessmen, like, like um, metal, metal crafts, uh -huh. the only such building I th perhaps left in the city the man was 79 years old, and he was a craftsman of note, gone. He you couldn't know, afford you know, it. You know the Orchidia. You know, yeah, they were all being gone. forced out. And now they're being replaced by other big buildings with apartments renting for starting at $1,500 a month, going up to over 2000 co-ops, which are renting for a quarter of a million dollars a piece. Not, not exactly what is needed by the new immigrants and the old immigrants on the Lower East Side okay, that would like to get well, out of their rat traps and live better lives. So it's having a very negative effect. It's destroying, negative, actually, right. right? And we'll have to get into All Left right, Rack we'll get, and Seward we'll Park do that later in a because minute. that's another Let's big Let's go to one of the other areas. Are you having problems like that on the East Side? Similar. Um, on a much more massive scale, on a scale that is so technologically different that it's hard to conceive of. Um, technologically we, different. How do you do a technological it, development of it's, a It's of sort a of looking at right. the Twin Towers surrounding mm. St. Paul's Church, if you know <laughs> that vision. At you mean the time, World Trade Center? It's, it's almost the equivalent. <laughs> okay. Um, you have churches there, I know. Sure we in do. The east side. You, when you, when and you look synagogues. At, when you look at our historic areas, they yeah. include Sutton Area Community, Murray Hill Committee, Tudor City, uh -huh. um, Kipps Bay, Gramercy Park. These are all part of, our, of New York historic districts. They're beautiful. And they're gorgeous districts. Except you can't get into the park. Well, <laughs> we, we, okay. we haven't really started on that. Though. You haven't. Okay. But that's, uh, the, we have historic districts in our really area. Have. And they are under tremendous developmental pressure. The, administra the current administration's policy is to expand the central business district. They want to expand it east, coming along 59th Street. They've just put up, or they've just pressured for development on 60th Street of a Glick proposal. Right. Massive proposal. How high? It's the Glick proposal. Originally, it was the equivalent of 70 stories, and now it's worked back to maybe two-thirds of that. I think uh -huh. that's where it is now. But below grade yeah. is almost 40% of the total footage that wow. is permissible. So just below grade. I'm going to hold grade. you just for a moment because we have a phone call coming in. So I'm leaving you below grade. Okay. <laughs> and we'll be back to it. I'll hi, how are you? Yes, hi. Uh, I have a question to everybody. I, I am a, a sort of a middle income type person and many of my friends who are in the art world are also. And my concern is that the, the tremendous loss of the small businesses due to crazy rents. Uh -huh. and, and what I am seeing is, is that many of the speculators and developers and landlords are in fact determining the prices and what is being sold to us through the crazy rents that they're charging. And, and if this keeps going on, I mean, where are we going to shop? They're forcing us out of the city. I think you're right. That wasn't a question. That was a good statement, I think. <laughs> and we are in agreement with you, and that's why we're talking about the question of the developers. Uh, we're going to get to a point that refers specifically to you, commercial rent uh, and what can be done about it. Give us a little chance to talk about the rest of the problems here. And I agree. We will get back to you. Thank you. Okay. Underground. Okay. They were in a, the underground building uh -huh. and area is not considered under present New York law as part of the FAR, 
part of what is controlled by the zoning, zoning right. code. Uh -huh. So you, you they could build all kinds the, of things the, under there. Well, there are certain limitations, but the density that is generated by that additional uh, building yeah. is not considered as. But what do they put the there? That makes. What's the problem oh, of putting things there? They'll have malls and they'll have stores and they'll have all sorts of uh -huh. uh, right. expensive things to be and put garages. in there. And garages. And well, there is there is garage space there. This will attract tremendous density and usage, and that is not. Included Why in the don't you code. want better hmm. buildings and uh, new buildings and things like that? Obviously, it's it's a middle class community, and uh, maybe can people afford it? I don't know. Well, the uh, we do want. We're not against housing. We're not against development per se. Right. We're against development which goes so far beyond the zoning code that it's basically let's make a deal. The city administration and the present. Uh, head of the City Planning Commission, yeah. they feel that zoning is the problem. From their point, zoning is the problem. Every major blockbuster project has to have a new and separate zoning for that project In other words, they don't have to go by the rules. The rules are out the window. But they to think make the new rules, rules for are the every problem. Developer. Spot zoning. Spot zoning. Mm. In other words, if you can't get enough units out of the way it's zoned, means that you can put a certain number of units for a certain amount of space, yeah, with a exactly. certain amount of air, a certain amount of light. Those are regulations in New York City. These developers don't stick with those regulations? They want not only the developers, the city administration is busting those regulations, and considers those regulations outmoded and specifically attracts major developers to develop out of scale to anything that is within reason or within appropriateness within a neighborhood they were meant and destroy to protect, these neighborhoods. They were meant to protect your air, your light, your, your yes? Absolutely, but, but, that's, but that, that is taking, it up. the city hasn't been in compliance with the Clean Air Act since I don't know Absolutely. how long. Absolutely, and more developments means sure, less compliance more. coming up. Are you having that problem? We don't have the same scale of pressure, I don't uh -huh. think, that, that is seen on the Upper East Side or, or Steve's area. We, the East Village or Lower East Side has resisted that historically, as, as I'm sure uh -huh. Frank could speak better than I could. I haven't been there as long. Yeah. But, uh, and the scale of the neighborhood is much, is much lower. Okay. Let's hold it on the scale of the neighborhood. <laughs> we have a call coming in, and then we'll get back to you. All righty? Hi. How are you? Hello. Hello? Yes. Yes, um, I live uh, across the street from the York, uh, what used to be the Orchidia and uh, uh -huh. what is now a closed Steve's ice cream. <laughs> we did. And they just closed. Right. <laughs> another store which uh, used to be uh, an excellent discount everything store. Right. You could buy. Yes, I remember. Everything I remember. from paint to uh, paper uh -huh. to. Uh, right. Store pots and pans, whatever, and, uh -huh. and that's been up for grabs uh, in the real estate market ever uh -huh. since that closed down. And what I would like to know is why a place like the Orchidia, which used to be able to get probably the best pizza in, in New York, right. and, uh, and, and this other store, this discount the store, they Slavic closed Ukrainian down. the Ukrainian store in the place, and, right, uh, Ukrainian Italian. It's, it's Ukrainian it's all, Italian. Okay. Now these Places are abandoned, and there just seem to be okay. lying await for real estate I'm going to let somebody deal with that here. Fran Golden, who is Why? very much in the fight to keep Orcadia, she's going to talk to you about it there. Why don't you talk to the man? Tell him what happened this with minute? Orcadia. Yeah, he's sure. right there. Um, there was uh, there's the landlord who forced out the Orcadia after a two and a half year struggle, which we really thought we were going to win, and you win some and lose some again. Right. Fortunately, we've won some. Um, is the same landlord who knocked out that five and dime place that you talked about that we all used in the community. And the reason he's able to do it is because there is no protection in the city for the small businessman. And, and the stores have always been an integral part of the quality of the community. Um, the city has fought legislation in the city council, the city fathers that is. Uh -huh. The mothers are doing all right, but the city <laughs> fathers are not doing too well. The okay. city fathers have refused to pass legislation which is reasonable and which would stop this 
decimation of the small storekeeper okay. in Brad, all of Manhattan. We have another call coming in, and we're going to get back to that mm -hmm. legislation. Thank you for your call, and we will talk about that commercial rent that we were talking about. Hi, how are you? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I was born and raised in New York. I'm a small businessman. Mm -hmm. I'm here 52 years, and uh, I happen to have a business in your area. Uh, I don't know if you read Patrick Buchanan's article in the New York Post today, but his assertion is that it's the one-party uh, liberal democratic uh, party yeah. that has effectively destroyed New York. And I'm very familiar with your voting record, and you have a record of hostility towards businesses, hostility towards the police true. department as it expresses right. itself in uh, Tompkins Square Park. Uh, the streets are more dangerous, I believe, because of liberal attitudes such as uh, Marion Freelander expresses. Okay. And I wonder if you would be willing to step down and give this uh, city a chance to make a comeback. <laughs> if I believed in you and Patrick Buchanan, I might be willing to do that. But since I don't, and I don't agree with you, it's too bad. I would say that most of the Lower East Side, when I first came in there over 20 years ago, 25 years ago, was being milked by people who, like Patrick Buchanan, thought we ought to give it over to the business interests. Well, the landlords had the control. They did own everything. They didn't put any money back into it. They didn't fix up the houses. They milked it and they walked away. Now they want it back because they can buy it cheap from the city and get support from the city. So we have a difference there. And then, of course, we have a lot of people who live there. Ukrainians, Italians, black, Hispanic, Asians, I mean, Indian, you name them. We're, and Jewish, we're all together there. We are getting pressed by the landlords, and as you heard from the calls and from us, being forced out because they, your business developers who think something's wrong with rent control, many of the older people would be forced out of their apartments if we didn't have some kind of rent stabilization or rent control, just some little measure to hold on to it. So obviously, you and I have a difference, and perhaps we are trying to save the community. Thank I want I want to add a word, I and just, that is uh, there have I been many elections, and the majority of the people who have voted mm -hmm. have expressed themselves very democratically because overwhelmingly Miriam continues to be elected. And since we have a democracy, I think that says something. Okay, uh, we're not running for office here tonight. We <laughs> are talking about the thing he raised, and that is rents, commercials, etc. We were back there in your skyline, weren't we? Was yeah. The Lower East Side? Back in our lowered skyline. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of pressure in our neighborhoods also. Yeah. Uh, rent skyrocketing. Uh, and rental you have a units. Particular yeah. Rental units not available. Uh, uh, a lot of co oping going on. Right. Two buildings on our block. Uh, one in particular. What effect does co oping have? I know a lot of people, a lot of these owners are buying up buildings suddenly. You know, new owners, new turnovers and such and then they're forcing, pressing for co-oping. What effect is that having? Well, I think we see it most in the neighborhood in the loss of the rental market, and the inability yeah. of people to, to rent any longer at a reasonable price, uh -huh. uh, to find anything to rent at all. What is, you mean they just can't afford to buy those units That's once right. they're They can't afford to buy them. Uh, the people that are lucky are the ones that are in the buildings and non-eviction plans go into effect. At least they can stay. Yeah, but aren't there people in there who are getting harassed even though they don't want to be part of the co-oping plan? Well, this is part of the problem that we've had on our block. Uh, we had a situation where someone was being displaced from a, from a building and it led to a particularly unfortunate episode. That was a tragic episode. I'm going to leave you yeah. with the tragedy for a moment and come back because we have another call here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that episode. Okay. All righty. Hi, how are you? Fine. Um, my question is that uh, it seems that there are very distinct neighborhoods in New York, which is what you are leading up to, and that in educating the people of New York City mm -hmm. as to their historical um, uh, architectural historical um, truths in, right. in terms of Tribeca and the Dutch and mm -hmm. West Village and so forth, that people will see and, uh, that these buildings are not in scale with what is pre-existing. Right. Um, is there any way that you can focus your attentions, or those of you who are on this you know, talk, talk show, right. in terms of educating you know, people in New York City as to the distinct quality of the neighborhood that is being lost. Sure. Because I think it's always an on-site battle right. 
Okay? Mm-hmm. And right. Miriam, I think uh, you're wonderful in terms of oh. what you've done in the city. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate it. Appreciate the attacks and the support. It means I'm doing something, right? <laughs> okay. Rob, we're going to get back to you. And then the question that you have raised, I'm going to let Janice start talking about because she comes from the Tribeca area where they've done a great deal to help try and fight to preserve the historic background, as well as in the Lower East Side. What's the story of that tragedy? And why does co-oping or other kinds of changes of that nature create those problems? Well, uh, it also relates to something that the, the last caller said, and that's yeah. the loss of neighborhood, not so maybe in architectural terms, but in personal terms, and the people that live there. Uh-huh. And one of the things that has made the area that I live, the Lower East Side, particular and wonderful place to live is uh-huh. the kind of people that can live there, that historically oh, have yes. been able to, because it. it's been affordable that's until recently. <laughs> you know, the first thing a young person did when they left home was go to the Lower mm-hmm. East Side because they could find a place they could afford to live right. and they could touch it, you know, with the paints and the, and the, <laughs> and the dance and the things and theater, right? Exactly, so exactly. Yeah. We had a, an incident on our street where a, a building is co-oping and there was a, a person living in a storefront. Uh-huh. And uh, storefronts, as you all know, are, are commercial spaces and he was being forced out. He uh-huh. was the last person in a storefront uh-huh. uh, in this building, which had, I think it has about ten storefronts, five on each side of the building. Yeah. Uh, the landlord saw fit, uh, they were going to show the building on a weekend and it was opening. It's in the co-oping process, has not been approved as a plan yet. He was a paraplegic, wasn't he? He was, uh, uh, he had one, uh, he had one arm and one leg. Yeah. He was right. a disabled person, although if he heard me calling him that, he would uh, he never would speak to me again. Okay. <laughs> he was an irascible East Village type. I mean, abso- <laughs> absolutely, a character, a character. A, but wonderful. And a, a fixture in the neighborhood, a street musician, um, uh, well-known in the neighborhood. Right. Not an easy person by any right. stretch of the imagination. Well, he was the last person left in the storefronts, but before they could show the building, they felt it necessary to cover the storefronts. Uh-huh. So they built sheds on either side of the building to cover the storefronts and uh, covered his storefront. Totally. Solidly. I mean, there was no light there, so what no happened? entrance, no nothing. So what they left him was a door 60 feet away, down a two and, and a half he was in foot a wheelchair. wide. He occasionally was in a wheelchair. At this time, he wasn't. He, uh-huh. But he walked with a, a wooden leg and a cane. Okay. And they created a situation that, that was probably very difficult for him in an unlit corridor, two and a half feet wide, 60 feet down to get out the door. Uh, the uh, Thursday after this was completed, it was completed on a Friday, he was found dead in, in his storefront. Yeah. But I think the idea there, I mean, that's an extreme case of It had to pressure, look nice for the buyers, But it had to look it nice, to look so you blocked the him out. That was he a was horrible. buried alive. But I know the effect it has on a lot of people who have lived a lifetime in a particular building, and now they're suddenly confronted with pressure to buy or to get out or to take some money and go. Go where? I don't know. Historic district, uh-huh. Tribeca. Tell us, what about Tribeca? What is it? Where is uh, it? Well, Tribeca is the triangle below Canal Street, and it um, has a lot of Between historic value. Between West Broadway and Broadway, right? No, no. Oh, from, uh, from Greenwich Street to Broadway. Ah, okay. And it uh, stops maybe at Murray. A lot of things are growing up in there, huh? Um, all over the community, we have a lot of private developers trying to build as tall a building as they can by buying lots and uh, allowing for a plaza space so that they can build the tallest tower. In other can. words, if you get a plaza, in other words, you get a sort of a five foot next to your building, the you city lets you build what? Extra units? Height. More expensive, what, residences, commercial? Um, uh, Very often it's residential where private developers are involved. However, where personally the task force is involved in um, uh, development that's sponsored by a public development corporation, which is a quasi-city agency, Uh which can um, get hold of publicly owned or city-owned land and sell it in in private sole, sole bidding situation so that nobody really knows what's happening to the land until... In other words, they go to somebody and make a deal. Basically, Especially yes. if it's offered, if money is offered to them, right? And, and they don't need uh, bids? Uh, no, they're allowed to have sole, sitting, uh, sole bidding situations. Um, also, uh, they, uh, 
the public development's mandate is to get as much money as it possibly can for this land, so that essentially it ignores the them? neighborhood, who know, who uh, the city. They work. That's part the present administration. That's not how it has to be. That's just what That's the present administration wants. That's comparatively new procedures. Well, PDC has been for around for a long time, but the present administration has given them great power. So that essentially... To sell off city land. Yes. And specifically this in our city-owned land that it we're talking about, right? city-owned land. And to yeah. Which is why we feel we have um, a right to be involved in how that land is developed. And what that's are what we are it? trying to do. Uh -huh. well, in Who our, would they offer it to? Uh, tell me about one of the areas. Well, in our neighborhood, we have an urban renewal area, which has its own zoning. Therefore, you can build a tall building, uh, even though the rest of Tribeca is predominantly five-story brick. That's and the cast old iron. historic loft buildings, which right. um, it's a relatively new neighborhood, but um, in the last 10 years it's doubled in population. A and lot the population, of people live there, don't they? People with families, lots and lots of children. Uh -huh. I know you have a Washington Market Nursery School. Yes. And yes. a new primary school. There. Yes, we do. Uh -huh. And the primary school will be uh, crowded in two years, even though it's to house. So who are they family. dealing with now? We have short time so on this So what is now. happening in Tribeca is that PDC has offered to lease Drexel, one of the empty lots. Uh, Drexel there are Burnham, two. the ones Drexel who just Burnham had Lambert. their hands caught in the till for $165,000 <laughs> exactly. worth. Hundred thousand dollars worth, one sixty five thousand millions. Right? Millions. 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 What millions. am I talking about? <laughs> Nobody talks thousands anymore. They talk millions. All right. Uh, so they have offered. And the city's offering them a deal. Uh, they've offered them a ninety nine year lease uh -huh. to build on this lot, uh, which is city owned lot. Yeah. Um, and they are, Drexel is proposing to build a five hundred and nine foot building on this lot, which will be across the street from twelve story residential. Building uh -huh. and the rest of the community is basically did I 80 hear, feet did tall. Did I buildings. hear that they were offering them a tax abatement for approximately 65 million dollars? That's right. To develop Manhattan real estate. Mm -hmm. And they they say that they're offering this to keep them here. We we don't believe that Drexel would have moved anywhere. We think that they wasn't would Drexel to scheduled to move into the empty Seventh World, Seventh Trade, World Trade Center. So they weren't going anywhere anyway, were they? Well, we don't think so. I mean, they were just about to move into an empty commercial building. Now the mm -hmm. city's offering them, uh, convincing them at a $65 million tax abatement to build an outrageously tall building mm -hmm. in Tribeca. Right. And so they're going to be building, um, and it's basically as of right. There's nothing that we can do essentially to fight it. How tall is that? 509... It's, they say it's going to be 39 stories, but it's 39 commercial stories. Ah. So you know, 20 that's, foot ceilings. It, that's, there's so different heights it. involved in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Double it. Um, the PDC already sponsored the American Express building, which you could see from just about anywhere in the city. You can't see anything else. Uh -huh. um, any of our small, little, low-rise buildings in the neighborhood, right. but you can see the Shearson building from anywhere. Right. And on the other side of the Lower Manhattan, opposite you, we have Milstein. Is it? who wants to build in the beautiful historic area of the seaport a solid oh. hunk of high-rise building, mm -hmm. which the community is opposing, right? Well, we are certainly getting surrounded, aren't we? You didn't even talk about Riverwalk tonight. I was, I was you were about to get to, get to, to Riverwalk? <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about Riverwalk when we come back. We're going to talk about what you're doing in Trinidad. We're going to talk about, Seward, to Park. Talk about <laughs> Seward Park. There is so much going on that this city is sponsoring that is just so negative when it comes to people in our communities. Right. We will be back shortly. This is Manhattan at Large, Miriam Friedlander.
Good evening. We're back on the topic. And what is it? New Yorkers versus developers. I think you got a near full here, and we got a lot of wonderful calls from New Yorkers all about developers, pro and con. So we want to continue our story here because we've just begun to touch on some of the really outrageous projects that have been going on in our city. I just thought we'd get back here to the uh, Lower East Side. There's a big area there. How, how many of you have traveled through Delancey Street, you know, up to the Williamsburg Bridge, mm -hmm. and you saw these derelict buildings there over in the old part, you know, opposite the old Jewish uh, restaurant there? Yeah? Cats is done. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, not giving any ads here today. But you've all been down there. You all had a little uh, piece of the community, and now it's a wonderful Hispanic community that's developing. And Orchard Street's down there. Uh, we enjoy ours there. What are they planning to put in that big empty space? How many people did they clear off there in slum clearance? Um, One thousand eight hundred and fifty families in 1968 were bulldozed out of the community with a firm promise yeah. to be able to return when it was developed in a way that they could move into new apartments at rents they could afford. These families that were in the slums were promised the return right. to reasonable rent housing, right? That's what they were promised. Okay. There's a very long struggle that went on, 68 till 89, which yes. I will not go no, into, I was, except we to say all in it. <laughs> that it's been uh, uh, controversial, that it's been bloody, and that it involved race. The city determined not to let minority people back in, uh, wanted high rent, high rise housing instead. Right. And as a result of a very powerful fight back, it has resulted in n no movement uh -huh. until uh, February of 1988, when with big fanfare, the mayor announced that Mr. Lefrak was giving us a large gift to the city. He was giving back some oh, of really? the millions that he made uh -huh. by taking over the rest of the Seward Park urban renewal area, and he was going to build 1,200 units of housing. Oh, wow. Not one of wow. those units rented at a price that even one of the 1,850 families could move back into. They were they going are to, that high? They were, they were, there was going to be a, a 400 units of luxury condos. So you know that you're talking At about... $235,000 right. a unit. Right. And there was Very a small reasonable. percentage for people earning fifteen to 32000 and a large percentage... That's about 160 units. Right. Of the 1,200. Of the 1,200. Maybe some of those people could afford that. And about 680 80 were for people earning 32000 to 60000 how about that? Not one of them very for the people who class, were kicked very out. Very reasonable. So there's been an enormous fight back, uh -huh. and as as of as of this moment, it has not yet passed any level of city government. But while it has not passed, and while nothing has happened legally to give Lefrak, and it was done without open bidding, it was tailor made. Single for Mr. source again. That's right. what you were talking right. about. And they went and made a deal with Lefrak. Exactly. Right? So there have been parades. They even signed off an agreement with him before anybody knew about exactly. the project. But it's not. It's it's about worth the paper it's written on. You know. Oh, it is. I there have so. been <laughs> parades. There have been demonstrations. There have been sit-ins, and and there is now a lawsuit against the city and Mr. Lefrak and HPD to knock out this very bad, ill-conceived plan. While that's going on, there are. Two buildings filled with families. Right. And also on the ground floor, there are three shops that uh -huh. have been there forever. I right. lived on East Broadway for 18 years. My fruit and vegetable man is still there. Really? And he has received a notice to move out, that he's yes. been shown places where he can move to, even though it's not legal yet for them to do this. Uh -huh. And they are harassing the tenants, but even more do the you know, commercial people to get I out. I called HPD. Mm -hmm. I called Housing Preservation Development. That's the name of our housing agency. And I said, why are you asking these people to go and get relocated now? Do you have a plan yet? Have you shown a design? Do you really have to get rid of 20 units that have been fixed up, money's been put into it, $20,000 per, and people are living there. Why are you telling them to go? It's going to be another 15 years before you... They said, oh, we don't want to give them sudden notice at the end, <laughs> you know? And here we are dying for reasonable rent units, and they're ready to destroy it without even having a full plan yet. 
Right. So it's that, outrageous. It's outrageous. That is the left frack Fortunately, deal we'll organize, with so we the city. And we, the, the lower com east side community is beginning to deal with that, right? Well, we've been dealing with it since February of 1988. Right. when it started, uh -huh. in no uncertain terms. We've met with the city, we've met with, with Mr. Lefrak, yeah. who told us anything you want, you can have. You want low-rent housing, I'll give you low-rent housing. Where? That's, who, <laughs> there, of course. But when we walked out the door, that wasn't the case. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, it's it's, it's a, another long struggle, What's but it's not What's this claim he has that he's not making a penny on it? He's giving to the city 1,200 new units. Yes, he would do that, but he would make countless millions. First of all, he's been given, he will be given huge tax deductions. He's been given, ah. given a certain millions of dollars in cash right. to, to, get, to do us this favor. He's uh -huh. making 8% profit. Right. And then, of course, this is not counting what he does with the commercial spaces. Uh -huh. There are other developers in this city who can develop this in the way it should be developed. We feel it should be developed a third, a third, and a third. Right. A third for low, a third for moderate, and a third for middle. People really, middle income, where two people like a, a fireman and a teacher both have jobs, mm -hmm. they should be able to live too. Right. And, and also moderate income people and low income people. Can it but be with done all that the way? condos and all the co-ops, we keep do not need city land given away for luxury housing. They keep telling mm -hmm. us down at, the, down at the city hall that they can't afford to do it. They can't get developers who will do that. Are there people who can develop it the way you're doing? Dozens talking? of developers with good track records, right. given an opportunity. I know them personally, who've, right. who've said they can do it, who've shown us plans. Yeah. And we're going to press our point until that comes to pass. Okay. Mm. So these deals, these individual deals with developers, with the city administration, under city policy and directed by the city, are giving away our land right. and creating homeless? Nobody hears the word homeless down there. What do you do with homeless? Shove them into the armories, 12,000 beds in one floor. But when we ask, why aren't you building reasonable rent? They say, we can't afford it. And this is the answer to that. We have another delightful project that's been going on for years. Yeah, we have How a, about it? We have a great sole source uh, project. Which also is a sole source? Yes, you have really to get to know this word. Sole source means the city has gone in, either p through PDC or otherwise, or city planning, right? Yeah. Well, let me with one yeah, developer. Sole source is important. In 1979. Yeah. You want to hold sole sure. source? There's a call coming in, and we'll get back to sole source. Hi. How are you? Good evening. Um, outside of the displacement that um, will be caused in this war, these 20 units you, you have been describing right. the left right program, will they be displacing any other tenants, non-city-owned buildings? If, if left right no, because this is an entire, this is an urban right. renewal site, and everything on it is city owned except that Everything. there once were yeah, that's always the hundreds case. of buildings and and 18, 1850 families lived there it's just that it's so long ago they act like it never happened but right. of course it they was once there. fully occupied yeah. okay well, well, won't it won't it displace i mean the the growth of that luxury development there won't it start like um Second domino effect in the whole area absolutely no. absolutely right what happens when you develop these things is that the whole assessment and taxes go up, so it affects the entire community in terms of mm -hmm. increases in rents and costs and such. Absolutely. Let's get back okay. to your sole let me, source. Let me give you a little history <laughs> on a project by the name of Riverwalk. Uh, in 1979, the city produced a request for proposal for a development on the area between 16th Street and 24th Street on the East River, in a uh -huh. cove in the East River. The theory was that this water was underutilized. It was <laughs> underdeveloped. The water was the underutilized? Mayor, the mayor uses the term that it was massively underutilized. Water. The water, the, okay. the cove. What and there's a to little the garage fish, there and some the, parking The beautiful there. scene. So a... they, the, there were four projects that were developed. The community board uh, took a look at it and voted a preference for they voted in a series of preferences, and the administration took the one with the third preference. That was in 19. <laughs> that was in 1980. Very democratic. From 1980. The mayor said, "No, I don't like the one you picked. I take the third one well, down." We were not in favor of the community board. Was not in favor, favor of any of them. Any of them. But at least in terms I of preference, there. the mayor took the third, uh, and okay. it was supposed to be be developed in conjunction with 
input from the community board, which Hold has never happened. Hold the input of the community board. We have another question. We're getting a lot of questions tonight. Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, I understand very well what you're saying, but what I do not understand is, uh, and I agree with you, I might say, is what anyone can do to change this. And who is this uh. mysterious they that you're always talking about. <laughs> they do this and they do that. Okay, I'm glad you asked that question, because as soon as we get through with Riverwalk, I'm going to go around the group here, and they're going to tell you what they're doing about it, and maybe it'll help you participate in doing, and we are going to say the they, we have been saying the they, we say the, the administration, we say agencies that are directed by the administration, but I'll get to it more specifically. Thanks for the question. Okay, okay. Steve, let's finish let me, with Riverwalk. Let me continue. Riverwalk is, is basically 2,000 apartments. Wow. It is uh, 2,000 parking spaces. It is a hotel, a convention center. Just recently, the mayor came out a and marina? said... A marina? Two marinas. <laughs> two marinas. Uh, and said he was, uh, the project was too big and too dense, and he would not support it unless the hotel, the convention center, were knocked out and the buildings were lowered. But really, it was the administration that was forcing this maximum development from the very beginning. Right. And this is the mayor beginning to run against himself, against his own record, against his own... Has he really run against it? No, he's still He very simply said he's delayed it and deferred decision until... We know that he's for this project. There's right. no question. He has not he has really changed his position. He has supported it. He has modified his position to some extent. And we wait to see what will happen after the election. Okay. We're concerned about that. You know, one of the things that I think we have to mention here in all of these developments and projects is that it's not just the increase in rent. It's not just the limitation of light and air and such. But, for instance, down in your area, the increase in congestion, mm -hmm. right? Traffic? Traffic congestion. Uh, huge populations of people coming into a neighborhood, overcrowded sidewalks, right. and also the lack of use of that space for the needs of the community. Absolutely. That's right. And what about the uh, use of services? What would community you envision services. if you got the uh, river walk there? Well, in, in, our, in terms of the infrastructure, the sewage plants where the sewage would go from the river walk development is already at least 15 to 20 percent over capacity. Oh. So that when so it rains, the storm sewers uh, would overload the sewage, the sewage ducts uh -huh. and would in fact be dumping raw sewage in the, in, in the river. Uh -huh. um, Dr. Barry Commoner, who did a study from, as a result of uh, money that David Dinkins provided from his budget, uh, says that the project should be called Sewer Walk because he's very, <laughs> very concerned about the damage that But these are the things that the that city that doesn't talk about, right? These are very dangerous things. And the, by the way, the, the budget will not contain anything adequate to reconstitute that sewage plant until at least 1996. 96. 96. So in, we're still in city terms, that means uh, 20. No. The other amazing thing about this is the massive amounts of money that's involved. Right. Ten years ago, this was proposed to cost $600 million. The developer has already gotten through the United States Congress tax legislation that particularly exempts them from the new tax rates that all other builders are, Can are you dealing imagine? with. In other words, if you're not getting your youth money, if you're not getting your drug fighting money, if you're cut back on educational funds from the federal government, they are very happily giving these kind of builders mm. the tax deductions that our mayor, well, we're they talking they now, you asked about they, that our mayor is sanctioning through every agency, through Public Development Corporation, the semi-legal uh, thing, through HPD, and through all the areas, tax abatements. In other words, if these operations don't pay their taxes, it means you don't have it in the budget. Why does the city have to give money to developers to develop in Manhattan? How they about <laughs> Coliseum? Do you know that they're giving them, what, $50 million abatement to build in Columbus Circle? Okay. Lord knows why they All right, the question was, and I think we have some very good uh, things that we can tell people about. Uh, first of all, 
I have to tell you one little story, and that is in, in one of the meetings I was at and hearings about the development of 14th Street. Whoops, we're getting second off on 14th Street. The <laughs> towers, <laughs> the horrors there, more is going to be on South 14th Street. And I was asking the representatives from the City Planning Commission. Now, mind you, a planning commission which is supposed to be planning with the community mm -hmm. for the development of communities. And I said to them, how come uh, you are not listening to the communities and what they want and how they want it. And they say, well, somebody has to come to us with a plan. And I said, do you mean to say that only if some corporation or developer or real estate has enough money to totally develop a developer's plan of tremendous proportions, only then will you look at it? And uh, they said, yes, that's when we look yeah, at the plans. So the here is a basic city agency meant for planning with a community that has admitted that's the only time they look when the developers come to them. So we have to do it. OK, you have some wonderful work that the community has done in terms of how do we stop this and how do we build different kinds of plans. Right. Tell me about Cooper Square. I, I will. I, I think that it's important not only for Cooper Square, but for the River Walk area and for the Tribeca area and Fourth Street, all of yeah. the areas, all yeah. of the areas in the city, to understand that just like developers can develop plans, so can communities develop plans. Uh -huh. And if communities learn from each other and coordinate their efforts and visit their legislators and hire planners that are that are sympathetic to them and architects that are sympathetic to them. How does the community hire a planner or an architect? Well, there that's what we've done. <laughs> that's what we've done on the Lower East Who's Side. Who's we? The Lower East Side Joint Planning Council, Cooper Square is one member of the... How many organizations are there? 53 organizations. And one of the organizations is comprised of 27 Catholic churches. Uh -huh. So it's a large group of, group of organizations, organizations that are dedicated to to low and moderate income housing. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is develop a plan to rebuild the rest of the Lower East Side, doing, uh, taking the cross-subsidy plan of the mayors uh -huh. and altering it so that it can work. Right. Because 80 percent for the rich and 20 percent for the poor doesn't work. Right. Uh, uh, in the Lower East Side, the plan is for 2,000 units, 1,000 for, unfortunately, much to our regret, but it's the only way we could do it, market rate housing. Uh -huh and 1,000 units for low and moderate income housing. We'd like it to move faster. The community board has, has endorsed it 100%. We hope it will move faster. But that plus inclusionary zoning, which means that all new housing built by private developers has to have 20% low income units as part of it. Uh -huh. And the third one is a local enforcement unit in the area of the Lower East Side, you so know, people I've don't have to play, pay fares to go downtown or uptown to city offices, where people who are being harassed out of their homes, like poor Lincoln yeah. and others, can go to this in local enforcement unit and get relief, for whether their ceiling is coming down or they don't have heat or the landlords okay. are trying to force them out. Fine. What so are you doing? We, we yeah. in our, our community, right. in Cooper Square specifically, have taken a building which was slated for luxury housing and to make it a very short story, created 22 units, beautiful units, on 2nd Avenue and 1st Street. It's that's the Q building. That's the Q building. That's the one the city was going to sell for $1 to a developer? That's right. We paid 11000 for it. Okay. <laughs> and, but you got it away from the city. It's built, <laughs> and two days before Christmas, everybody was in the building, and we're not only letting them have new apartments, but they're going to create new lives in this community. Homeless people. All of them, all of them from hotels and shelters and homeless, who are now now have an opportunity. And it's a whole mix of people in there, right? It's it's there. There are white people, there are black people, Hispanic, there are Chinese people, there are hearing impaired. This people. is what a community group can do, and, and they, any community can do it if you get together. Let me tell you also one little secret: they also involve every elected official they can reach on the phone. <laughs> and they had got them. They got money from the state, and they got money from the city. And if they're hangups, they call us into meetings, and we're all working together in terms of getting. You the can't work do done. it alone. You no one can do, do it by do themselves. It no right. dedicated person community can do it. Community board, you've got to coordinate got all the good people in your community and work together. Right. Okay, what's happening in Tribeca? What are you all doing? 
Well, I know you have an association, right? <laughs> right. We have uh, the Tribeca Task Force, and we're affiliated with the Tribeca Community Association. And we too are trying to get hold of that public land for use for the community. What we're do you, not what do you propose? What would you like to do with that land? Well, our community has no open recreational space. There is none. We have a small park. I mean, it's four acres. You're right next to the financial district. We're right next you? to the financial district. Yeah. Um, uh, we have a small, very lovely park, which is, of course, already overburdened I by know, the population. We have built it. Yes, it's a beautiful we got the park. Funding for it. However, it's not a playground. There is no place for children five years old or older to, pl to you play. Have, you're going to have three schools there, aren't you? We have three schools with you no have a outdoor school? play space. Stuyvesant High School is moving down there. That's right, with no outdoor facilities. With no outdoor. Uh, can you imagine no, building a high school without an athletic no, field? Right, right no right? athletic field. Um, the new elementary That's school. That's because they're all scientific. They're all yeah. up here, right? Uh, there's a but college entitled. Yeah. with no outdoor um, Which athletic college? field, uh, Borough of Manhattan Community College. That's right, which is already the Borough of Manhattan Community. It's a beautiful college. So we're it's talking about thousands of students being brought into the community, aside from the number of no kids that live fields, in the community, no parks. and no place for these children to play. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. one of the things that we would like to see is some um, outdoor recreation space. We're okay. coming up now with three alternatives. We're getting ready, we're trying to raise funds right now uh -huh. to hire a planner, to work in conjunction with the community to come up with three alternative plans for the two city-owned lots that are If there. you have an idea, may I suggest you get in touch with your community board, and if you don't know where it is, call us or call, call some official or call City Hall. They'll tell you where your community board is, and they'll tell you about the group that's working on the very plan you would like to think about, right? Rob, what are you doing? We have a phone call waiting, but let me get some of these ideas, and I'll get right back to you, okay? Well, we're working on a microcosm on our block, and what we're doing in a specific instance, which was the Don't problem Don't sound small, Rob. That's where it starts. <laughs> that's where that's, the effective that's work how, is. That's how we feel about it. And we want people to understand that displacement, displacing of people, doesn't necessarily mean just leaving your home. It means leaving your neighborhood. It means leaving your friends. And, you and don't for have some to people, it, it means it? losing their life. Right. And it's a very, very important thing. Uh -huh. And we want people to understand that. And we're going to try and make sure that what happened in our neighborhood, on our block, is not going to happen again. In other words, that strength of being together. I tell you, I was at that demonstration, and people said, oh, it's so good to see everybody. They felt so isolated. They felt there was nobody to depend on. And that getting together on block mm -hmm. associations and the things that you're doing. One last word. What are you all doing? Well, basically, we're getting ready for a fight. Uh -huh. We're raising money. Yeah. With we're getting <laughs> Well, right. when okay. I say uh, our local community organization that is opposed to Riverwalk is getting ready for a fight, we've joined well, an alliance. Well, you ally already have. Don't you? A, a court case in there? We started a lawsuit. The judge judged that it was premature, that the city had not done anything yet, despite that they had agreements, <laughs> despite, said that no actionable oh, wow. basis had been done yet by the city, uh -huh. and not until the Board of Estimate votes. Can we bring the lawsuit? I see. So we've raised money, we have an organization, and we're ready for a fight. We've coalesced a series of organizations into an East Side Rezoning Alliance oh, that is planning the whole Community 6 uh -huh. uh, board area. And we have done some rezoning towards Murray Hill, towards Sutton Area Community, Good. and now we're moving a plan okay. down to 14th so Street. So if anybody tells you you can't fight City Hall, listen to all this, will you? And it's happening all over. People are getting resentful and angry at the destruction of their communities. Hi, there's a phone call waiting. How are you? Yes, good evening. Good evening. I would like to know why Mayor Koch would promote the building on the water in the cove at Riverwalk, proposed Riverwalk. Right. What personal interest does he have in that project? Uh -huh. I can't tell you what his personal interest in, but I can tell you that his city policy has been to make individual agreements with developers to rob us of our waterfronts, like Riverwalk, East River Landing, which is down towards the bottom of, the, of the Manhattan. He is giving Zeckendorf somewhat agreement to build a 70-story building over the ferry down at the Battery Park. Can you imagine what our borough will look like Miriam, when you come in what? over the harbor? And the agreement on Riverwalk, there is pressure to build platforms on the Hudson River all up and down. I don't think Manhattan will ever be Manhattan again if we allow Mayor Koch to continue that kind of policy. Thank you. There's another call waiting. Hi. How Hello? Are you? Hi. Yes, um, I was 
concerned about uh, the Tribeca question of you say you need to have three schools going in and there's no uh, playground. And uh, Janet Townsend mentioned that she was trying to raise funds to do a plan for the community. I'm a little, I don't quite understand why does the citizen group have to raise money to do a plan? Why doesn't the planning department <laughs> come up with Good a plan? Question. <laughs> and what is the planning department paid for if they don't come up with plans? You are so right, right. and I think that is the policy that we are fighting here. What we are exposing here is that the city agencies, the planning department, the public development corporation, and the many other agencies are working with the developers yes, in order so to support the their plans and they are not listening to the communities or the people in there and the communities are suffering. They are not going to lay down, they are not going to continue suffering, they are fighting back. And many changes have been made with this fight back and it is not to the interest of our communities to allow this developer driven policy in our city but rather New Yorkers to take over and help plan the community. And New Yorkers are very good people. They're wonderful people. They're creative people and very practical people, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They can do the job. I've seen wonderful plans, and I think we can recapture how to plan for our communities, how to live, and not to allow the developers to destroy. Do the developers have a role? Of course, they have, yeah. a role. Yeah. they have a role. But we all agree, right? right? But they have a role that should be serving the community. In other words, Absolutely. we help make the plans of what we want. It right? should be within an overall context of planning. Right. They should not be doing the planning of the city, and that's how it's happening mm -hmm. right now. Exactly. Nor it's should we be selling off the city land mm -hmm. to them. Nor should we be giving away the budget taxes that we need so badly now. So I think we have to listen more to the New Yorkers and do less for the developers in the context of what we are doing here tonight. Well, I think you've been hearing the, our side of the story and I hope it has helped you. For anybody who wants to hear more about any of our areas here or you want to hear about your own community, call your elected official in your community or call City Hall or call us and we'll point you in the direction where you can participate in the planning in first of all fighting any obnoxious development and secondly helping be part of the planning for your community. I'm Miriam Friedlander, I'm City Councilwoman in Lower Manhattan. We have Jana from Tribeca, Steve from the East Side, Community Board 6, Fran Golden from the Lower East Side and Rob Schoenbaum. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>